Welcome to Buried Treasures Episode 3. I'm Eric Rangel. Today we're going to talk about Willy Bite, which is a um, game that teaches you the internal architecture of the Apple II computer. So before we get to the game, I'm going to show you some demos of games I enjoyed as a kid from Total Replay, and then you'll see a demo of Mockingbird Speech. Willy Bite does an amazing job of integrating graphics, animation, mockingbird, music, and sounds, and speech. So you'll get a sense of all the programming it took to make that amazing game. Okay, we're now looking at Broderbund's AE. And this was state-of-the-art for Apple's six-color high-res graphics at the time. Notice how easily the white birds move along the orange, blue, and uh, the other scenery and the objective here is to get perfect attacks where you um, get all of the birds in the same okay this is alien ambush okay so when you shoot something it splits in two and then they start bouncing around and then another wave comes through Okay, time for some alien munchies. If you're getting hungry and you want to do some grilling, you catch the green and purple aliens as they fall. Yes, green and purple are primary colors in Apple high res and you could shoot them too. And you want to keep watching out for that propane. Yeah, you see they'll, uh, they'll vaporize on the ground, but uh, you got to watch your propane. And it'll fly across the sky right there, and you have to shoot the propane. Now, when you shoot propane in the sky, it won't explode. You catch it on your barbecue and it refuels. Okay, this is BC's Quest for Tires. Another amazing achievement of low-res colors. So here, you're, you've invented a wheel, and you're using it to get around the country, jumping on turtles. Oops, sorry. And you got to jump over rocks. So this is a precursor to Jungle Hunt, or Jungle King in the arcades. And if you get hit by a rock, you fall down on your face, and you don't have insurance. Okay, next game, Bouncing Kamungas. So this is a very realistic simulation of a farmer where aliens uh, pound him into the ground. Yes, and watch out for that lightning. Okay, you'll see that in a minute. So you're growing melons, you have to plant them. If you don't plant anything, you don't go anywhere. You could just keep killing the kamungas, but uh, you wanna let them grow enough until you can, until they're ripe. So you see those little black dots on it? That means it's ripe, and you have to harvest them. You could harvest them at any point, but uh, you see that number in the upper left? It keeps going down. Okay, so now you're gonna see what happens if you try to keep your lightning rod up. Oh, there's a weasel. Yeah, purple weasels, always watch out for those. They'll poison your seeds, and then you'll grow cactuses instead of melons. But now we're going to get struck by lightning. Okay. Now this is buzzard bait, and very innovative. So those birds are making love, and then they're going to have little baby birds in their eggs. And now they got to go feed their birds, so they're going to pick up humans like that. And uh, that poor guy is gone, but you can rescue them at a sacrifice and now that one bird's going to eat a human and uh, we gotta get the re remaining birds and then a baby bird is going to come out you know, that baby bird was just born and it's going to really go fast and try to get you boom but you got them all so now a turkey buzzard flies across and you have to hop over the turkey buzzard while you're doing everything else Okay, so this is a fun game. Uh, it's old, but uh, good animation at the very good demo. Okay, and uh, yeah, so it's uh, you gotta jump over these cannonballs and use them as seesaws and uh, just don't get uh, a headache because if you run into a ball, you get a really bad headache. 
okay, this is a fun pinball game, and I played it for a few hours until I figured out how I could get all three balls into the ball trap like that. And then they all come out, and you have multi-ball entertainment. So you got to try to keep them alive. And then, let's see, okay. Now, Dino Eggs. This is a fun game where you're traveling back in time to the dinosaurs. Okay, your Time Master Tim going in your time warp, and you have to save the dinosaurs because you accidentally poisoned them. So now, your job is to warp into the cliff. Okay, you're on the bottom there. Now you got to pick up a few eggs. You can only hold three normally. Now you warp out, and you repeat that until you get all the eggs. But to you need to watch your time because uh, there's a dino mom who will come. Now, I picked up a piece of wood because the way to um, avoid the dino mom is to create a fire. So you create a fire by putting two pieces of wood on top of each other. You don't need anything to start the fire. And now that's a power gain, so that means I could pick up a whole lot more eggs. So I have to look under the rocks and pick up the eggs. And uh, you don't want to pick up too much like I'm doing here because you might die somehow and then all those eggs are gone. So I'd have to get up to the top of that. And I was trying to get up to the top of that. So I climbed the ladder and avoid the snake. And oops, I fell in the fire and I got burnt to death. Okay, now another nice feature is um, if the eggs hatch, okay, so when you go back to the warp, it uh, renews your uh, points if you've gotten contaminated, but I just caged a dino uh, who already hatched, and now I'm going to bring him back to the future, and we're going to create a Jurassic Park. Okay, so you warp out, and the little dino warps out with you. I don't know how it does that. Okay, this is Drelbs and you have to make squares and it's moving walls it's a lot of fun and um, it will know when you've made all the squares that are possible based on um, all the moving walls and you could try to trap that guy who's going after you but don't run into him okay now occasionally you will have a bonus so that white person you go to help and it adds up your points. And then when you've created all the squares, you have to run into that person again. Gentlemen, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mark Ford. My friend Black Sweet Micro Systems have asked me to perform for your listening pleasure. Me, 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 me. La, 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 la. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. Thank you. Sweet line mice, sweet line mice. See how they run, see how they run. They all ran after the farmer's wife. She put up their tails with a carving knife. If you ever see such a sight in your life as sweet line mice. Thank you. I can also change my voice. Hello. 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 That's all for now. Thank you for listening to me. So that is the speech demo that came with the Mockingboard disc, and it's all done by rule table. Classic adventure. Welcome to adventure. Would you like instructions? You are standing at the end of a road before a small brick building. Around you is a forest. A small stream flows out of the building and down a gully. Well, house for a large tree. There are some keys on the ground here. There is a shiny glass lamp nearby. There is food here. There is a bottle of water here. Okay, watch your typing. I don't know that word. Get lamp. Okay. Okay, what do I do now? Get everything. I don't understand that. A bottle. Oh. Okay. And you, it was delicious.
Learn to type. Your lab is the one. You are inside a building, a warehouse, or a large place. Will you fight in your digital dimension? <laughs> So now you're going to learn about the inside of an Apple computer. You're in the CPU right now, and um, when you hit that program button, it, you have to jump on these things to pick where you want to visit. So that was the CPU, and now this is the keyboard. So you have to jump on that button, and then it picks the key, the bits for the key that you selected. Now, this is not what an actual inside of a keyboard looks like. I don't think there are capacitors. Now, when you go to RAM, you have to pull the bits of your letter into RAM, and uh, you have to keep power going to the RAM because that clock, uh, if it runs down to zero, that means you've lost your dynamic RAM refresh. And then when you're ready to write your bytes to disk, you have to hover over the read-write head until it leaves a dot on the disk. So. This is like the fourth letter that you would write to the disk. Okay, that was the attractor screen. And now we're going to play the game. So start with a very simple word. Prepare to enter the digital dimension. Here we go. Okay, so that PC is a program counter and that represents the instruction in memory. So you could do if-thens and loops, but uh, the simplest thing is just like go to the keyboard, go to RAM, and then go to the disk. from Music Construction Set, Allegro. So the upper left is ROM, the lower left is RAM, the upper middle is the clock, the lower middle is the power supply, the upper right's the keyboard, and the bottom right's the disk, and your 6502 processor is your um, that's where you started, the ALU, Arithmetic Logic Unit. So this is Mockingboard Music. Play the game. Okay, so Apple keyboards, um, you have to maintain them a lot um, if you want them to keep working. So you got to clean them out and uh, let's see, what do we do here? We got to bounce, we figure out where to bounce on the key. Those key switches, sometimes they stop working, 
And I don't think we have any capacitors in our keyboards, even in, well, if you're talking about the decoder card, maybe. Okay. And this game, I've learned that multitasking is not helpful. If you try to put, bring down two bits at once, you're going to get confused. Oh, wow. Yeah, good use of speech. Yeah, so the, you got to avoid those things. Uh, let's see, you could fall as much as you want in this game. You won't get hurt. And that was nice. You bounce on it. Okay, you're undoing your work. If you need to get down in a hurry, falling is the best way to do it, rather than climbing down these slow little ropes. Gotta love those orange pants he's wearing. Mary had a little lamb. Try to play music on Little lamb. back. There's a meanie guy who's going to come in soon and mess things up for us. Oh, wow. So this part could be fun for kids to uh, jump up. Uh, Got to get used to the joystick and try to avoid falling and try to yeah, try to get them all down to the bottom. The rest of the game gets harder. So you could show the kids the music and show them you know, what the inside of the computer looks like. Just the raw, basic, conceptual architecture. So there are electronic parts that somehow do the magic. There is no magic in the computer. computer nerds. Okay, I don't know how well that aged from the 1980s. Is it okay to call your users nerds? Or is it a title of honor? When I was in high school, one of the people did a paper about nerds and I was a subject. Kay Savitz wrote a book, uh, Terrible Nerd. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. The oh, wow, it doesn't appear much in many other places. Oh, All wow. Right. Oh, boy. Back to work. So be kind to your keyboards, because you got all these little guys in there trying to get your bits down. Yeah, don't spill anything on your keyboards. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're taking it apart, you could use some isopropyl alcohol, but not too much. I've ruined the keyboard that way. So when you ruin keyboards, you have to find replacements. I lied. Yay! All that for one byte. One letter A. So imagine what Microsoft Decathlon would do to your keyboard. Prepare to enter RAM. Okay, so what's good about this depiction of RAM is that uh, they show how it requires electricity to refresh it. So those little um, lines of electricity falling down are needed to refresh RAM. So if you look at that counter at the top very carefully, 
you'll see that when one of those little lines hits the RAM, it goes back to 255. So if you stopped the flow of electricity and it counted all the way down from 255, then your RAM is not getting its refresh in time and you lose your data. Okay, so I'm preemptively taking a fan up to the top because I anticipated that the mean guy is going to bring a light and try to melt the ice barrier between him and my buttons. Uh, he's jumping for joy, but I got my fan to counter his light. So I just repaired my ice barrier and the computer decided it can go away. Now I have to jump on that button to bring the bit out of the socket. So now I'm going to try to... Uh, oops. See, that stops the electric flow, and see that it's counting down a lot. Now I start it up again. Ooh. Okay, now what's he got? He's got an oil can. He's going to try to make the ram slick. And I just... I tried to fall, and I tried to jump on that platform, but I didn't make it, so now i got to bring an oil can up somewhere. I don't know where to put it. What do I do with the oil can? So, how would oil affect RAM? Hmm, probably not well. Okay, so that's all. That's as far as I can go. So I could just leave my oil can there. I was trying to figure out what do I do with it. I'd probably have to go in the second row or where the electricity is falling and leave it there. Because it, it'll leave a little oil slick that may prevent you from getting back out when you're done. All right, but I'm just gonna jump or fall. All right. And I'll walk all the way to the right, and go up that rope. So this game is like Tron in some ways, and not, not like it in other ways. Whoops. I like the way my face alternates between orange and blue. All right, so I'm trying to figure out where to put the oil. All right, I'll leave it there, and I'm going to go pull my bit out if I could get past these little, little electric uh, shocks. Orange and blue. So it's just uh, changing the color bite. It's probably the just, yeah, EORing with 80. <laughs> okay. Let's jump on there, but not no, not that one. So there is an exploit called Rowhammer, which attempts to manipulate bits in memory, and uh, it can actually like find where on the chip the bits are expected to be for certain addresses. It's just weird, and apparently, by hammering the row a lot, you could figure out what the bits are in memory. It's just some crazy exploit that people dreamed up. But here's how you get a bit into memory. Yay, we got the letter A. Now in the Apple, uh, depending on what model you have, the RAM may be like uh, one chip per bit or two bits per chip. Um, so there's tons of information about the architecture of the chips. But RAM is basically D flip-flops, or JK flip-flops. Okay, we got our byte in RAM. Now we got to get it onto some permanent storage. Okay, but... Uh-oh. Our power supply is failing. Henry! We need a new power supply! It's only 40 years old. Uh-oh. Okay, so the if-then determines if there's a problem. Now, this is the most frustrating part of the game. You've got to perfectly land on each of these and turn them the right color. Now, your joystick has to be calibrated very well, because you could jump diagonally. And then there's a little charge kit which will help you, but... Not if a uh, power surge brings you to the edge of the universe. Okay. 
Oh, good. So now you have a little immunity, but you still got work to do. And it's a hand eye coordination. So you know you're getting old when you can't do that anymore. Okay, this is the clock. And the clock is working well right now. But if there was a problem, I'd have to do something. But I'm just going to just jump on some ledges and show you how you can jump around. Oh, wow. Prepare to enter this wire. Okay, this is a disc 2 drive. Why is it a disc 2? Because it has a belt. So you have to jump on the button, and that turns the belt, which turns the disc, or it stops it. Okay, so now our disc is turning, and this is how you write bits to the disc drive. Yes, you hover over the read-write head until it writes a, a byte. And this is why we need applesauce, because that magnet, it's going to eat bites off the disk. And after 40 years, that floppy, it's not flopping as much. <laughs> and then you get these users who build up static charges. So there's a certain amount of time you have to balance on that read-write head, but look what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to get rid of that static charge, but I don't know if I can, so I'm just going to balance on the read-write head and watch this. There's my bite, my bite, and now it's gone, and that is data loss. Okay, now it's time for my report card. How did I do? 6809. <laughs> Integrity of data. Keyboard, it had an A. RAM, I got an A. Disk, nothing, I lost it. Time, 6810. <laughs> I thought it was 6809. Okay, efficiency of movement, I made 20 blunders. And system status, the clock is positive, the power is positive. So my efficiency rating is number 36, register rater. So I made a high score and it saves high scores to disk. So that's coming up, it's loading it. And you can see that I play this game about once every 10 years. 1986, 1997, and then I skipped, and then 2020. So Uncle Fester played this on August 7th, 2020. watching.